Good afternoon, firstly. Um, I'm an elastic engineer at Skillfield. Um, today, the focus of my talk is a little bit broader than what Asta introduced. Um, I will be talking about um, how I've applied time series analysis generally um, to Ethereum. Um, so the way I wanted to break down the talk was, first of all, I wanted to introduce myself. And um, then I wanted to talk about what I've done so far in terms of modeling um, the price of Ethereum. I want to talk about what I am going to move to next. And then just at the end, hopefully I've sparked your interest enough um, that you're keen to look at a few resources and, and how to get started. But before I start, I wanted to just say thank you to Dr. Sara Cardani, who um, she's listening in. Um, as well, but she's been a great sounding board and she's responded to my um, very excited questions about how to model um, time series data. Um, she works, she also works at Skillfield and um, I've been asking her because she completed her PhD in time series model, modeling and uh, anomaly um, and performance of, a, a, of anomaly. So I, I'm just learning this, but she has real, real strength and I've been asking her um, question. So thank you, Sarah. I really appreciate it. All right. So first of all, I just wanted to introduce myself. So um, I only found tech um, really in my mid-20s. Um, I initially studied um, agricultural science and commerce at uni and I, um, I actually had a job um, after, after I left uni. I had a job where I was selling agricultural chemicals and there were just so many things around me that I thought could be automated. Like every Friday, I'd, I'd have to create like a SAP export and transform it. And I just knew that you could automate it, but I didn't really know how. So I started learning Python and, and went from there. Um, also, before I found tech, I, I worked for Garbo, I like a garbage man running behind trucks when um, while at uni. And I think these kind of broader experiences is why I'm more interested in application of technology than like, I don't know, uh, trying to create the 0.0005% better model. I, I just see such gaps between cutting edge tech and what's applied and, and how hard that is. And so, yeah, that's why I love Python. And also I love um, things like the Pandas Python library because it allows you to quickly take things that people do in Excel and automate them. Um, also, yeah, I love um, libraries like Selenium as well. Um, Selenium is used for um, testing, like traditionally it's used for testing code, but you can use it to automate any clicks or anything really you do on a browser, you can use Selenium um, to automate. So yeah, another um, example of application. Um, my love of application um, also recently has um, guided me to just to be really interested in DevOps. Um, for anyone not aware, DevOps is really the, the idea of um, reducing barriers between groups of developers and operations in an organization. And the way you go about that is by taking advantage of automation to do, um, to do things like um, automate the process between building and, and releasing code. But I don't know, with my broader experience before being in tech, I also just see that DevOps could be used in so many different uh, settings. Because, um, like, there's so many examples where leadership doesn't happen at skill field. Um, Oz is great. But there are so many examples in, in pre organization where the, the leadership have an idea and then they want to uh, implement it. And, and people on the ground just kind of know that it won't work. Well, and I, and I just see DevOps as, as a way to, um, to uh, get through that barrier. So, if I've um, interested you at all, I would strongly recommend, uh, and, and you're interested in learning about what DevOps is, um, I'd strongly recommend you uh, have a look at uh, these two books written by Jean Kim. Um, they just introduce the concepts of DevOps in a, in a fictional context, which is really interesting. 
All right. But now on to the time series analysis. So as a definition, um, and this is a nice definition from the, the ABS, um, they've defined time series analysis as a collection of observations of well-defined data items obtained through repeated measurements over time. In general speak, I could say that it is just repeated measurements and the, uh, the unique and related to time. So the example I'm using is Ethereum. So for every second, there is data coming in about the price of Ethereum and related to one second compared to the next. Um, and you can break down time series analysis into things like long-term trends. You can break it into seasonal trends that happen over a, a shorter interval. And then things like irregular trends, like um, as an example, things like COVID, which, which causes really a short-term spike, um, maybe yeah, changing the price of something or, or, or having that short-term impact. And I like time series analysis, again, because of the application, because you can apply this to so many things. I'm going to be talking about um, really um, the price of the price of cryptocurrencies, but it also applies to things like in my day-to-day um, -day work where um, in Elastic, you've got logs from many different machines coming in constantly and they're coordinated, they're organised by time. Also things like how many visitors you're having to your website or how many people you're visiting who are visiting your um, shop, like your physical shop. And you can use this modeling, these tools to do things like predict. In the example of say you have an online shop, how many resources you'll need at that, at that given instant. Or if you have a physical shop, things like how many people you need to staff that shop. So yeah. Again, application, um, I find it really interesting. All right, now onto my actual modeling of Ethereum and what I've done. So my overall approach of modeling Ethereum is a combination of fundamental analysis, like the uh, mega uh, uh, many billions worth Warren Buffett and um, Gordon Gecko. Um, who was in Wall Street and I, I put him up there because he um, is a proponent of technical analysis. So fundamental analysis, he, so I'll go back. I, my overall approach is a combination of fundamental, fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Fundamental analysis is getting an understanding of a, of a stock underlying asset value. So maybe if you're buying a company like Warren Buffett would do, you would look at how many shops do they have? What are this, the tr how well are the people trained? How well do the management work? How many trucks do they have? Physical things about how they can make money. So that's fundamental analysis. On the other side is technical analysis where you would use algorithms to be buying and selling stocks at a really fast interval. People are using things like specific patterns in a stock's price and, and visually looking at that pattern and then um, using that to determine whether they should buy or sell. So my approach is a combination of the two. It's a fundamental analysis because I believe in Ethereum. Like, I believe in the community support that's behind it. I believe in the fact that they're moving from proof of work to proof of stake, um, which means that they're going to be using a lot less energy. And also just the fact that they got onto smart contracts early. I, I, so I believe in the underlying um, uh, coin. And also I am trying to do this to recoup the $400 that I've lost by just uh, buying Ethereum, Ethereum and, and leaving it in there. Um, so what I'm gonna go through next is three different approaches I used um, to model this. 
Um, so first of all, I'm going to talk about a tabular model from Fast AI. Then I'm going to talk about Facebook Profit, the title of this talk. Then I'm going to talk about, and what I'm using currently, is a pre-built hard-coded model based on the Docker image for trade. Right, so Fast AI. So Fast AI is a fantastic Python library which allows you to do your machine learning um, with the use of a lot of tools that just make it a lot easier than it would usually be. They have a fantastic online course which guides you through how to use the library. And there's a really good community around who, who can support you. So what I did, this was my first effort at predicting the price of Ethereum in the future. Um, and what this is, what you're looking in front of you is an excerpt of, from the code. There is a couple of step, steps I haven't included, but overall you, you get the idea. All right, so what I um, did first, um, and yeah, this is the fast AI tabular model. Um, what I did first was I pulled in, I, I downloaded two years of Ethereum data. So I grabbed frequency of um, each day and I, so for each day was one row of data and it told me the high price for the stock, the highest price that the stock that Ethereum got to on that day, the lowest price it got to on that day, the closing price and the volume and the opening, if I didn't mention that. Um, and so I had that line. What I then did was I had to create an, some kind of label, something to train against. So what I did is I created a column, I think within the data frame that just said, based on the following day's price, should I buy, should I sell, or should I hold? So in terms of actually practically doing that in code, um, I just created a function and it looked ahead to the next day. And it said, if the price went up 7%, then I should buy. If the price stayed the same, which up to that 7%, then I should just hold and do nothing. But if it went down, I should sell. Then what I did was, then what I did was, um, I actually um, applied that to the pandas data frame. Um, you can just see that highlighted there. And pandas has a really nice um, tool for doing that. So um, it's just called uh, dot apply, um, and you can just uh, put in put in the um, the function that you've already created. It it's nice because it means you don't have to do really um, long for loops that that take forever. Um, then what I did was I used some of the uh, nice tools that FastAI allows you to use. And um, the first one was um, uh, Categorify, which um, because machine learning models don't really like you just using um, like a, a word, they don't understand the idea of buy, sell, hold. What the model understands is the values one, two, and three. So Categorify just converts those categories into numerical values. The next fast AI lovely function that I use is normalize. Again, the machine learning model, it doesn't like huge variances in the different features that I'm using, those open, high, low, and close. What it likes is values very close between negative one and one. And it does that by just taking the variance. Um, and, and yeah, it, it scales that data. Then what it also does is it has a beautiful, nice uh, library which uh, module which um, allows you to just fill any missing variables. So they'll come up either blank or within your pandas data frame as not a number, so NAND. And, um, well, what it does is it just looks for the median of that individual feature or column, and it just fills those empty values with that. 
then, and this is common across all fast AI, um, fast AI models, you need to convert the data into a data loader object. That's an object that the model can actually take. And it, it does that through the two dot data loaders um, module. Then you um, can run a learner um, and find the right learning rate that you want to apply to your individual model. So um, fast AI, they really push the idea of like, cutting your data um, down into small pieces and, and quick iterations, I suppose, similar to, to the DevOps principles. Um, so this is from one to 10,000 rows, and then you're just trying to find the, where you've got the least loss, um, and then you train upon that. And then you can just export it. All right, so that's what I did. But I just kept getting, I, I only got about 50, the best I could get was 50.3 accuracy. And if you can work out what I've done wrong, then well done, because it took me about a week to work out why this was failing, just over and over and over. And it was because um, it didn't actually take into account time at all. All this model did was it looked row by row and it looked at those open, high, low, closed values and then just tried to predict buy, sell, hold on that. It was only looking at the individual row. So really it was just it was barely better than a guess, really. Um, so from that point, um, I realized that wasn't good enough. So I went searching for another option. The next option I tried was using the um, Facebook profit library. And this is fantastic because it's very simple to use. It's nice and it's lovely. All it wants, it wants a nice, it, it wants two features. The first feature is the timestamp. And the second feature is just the variable that you're trying to model. So in this example of um, Ethereum, it just wants one um, feature, which is the time and the price of Ethereum. And as I'll show you, after you've gone through this, it creates beautiful interpretations of um, the trends and any, and any um, like weekly anomalies and visualizes it um, for you. So in terms of code, what you're looking at here, um, and I'm sorry, this is just an example from the docs of Facebook Profit. I did use this, but um, I struggled to find um, my, my actual code that I, that I used. So what you do with Facebook Profit, if you'd like to use it for any of your data, is um, you just import the data and you just need to make sure that it, the time series is labeled by capital DS and the dependent variable is labeled by a Y. So in my price, price, in my example of Ethereum, the price is labeled by Y. So that's just reading in a CSV that you download. Then you instantiate the profit object and call fit um, based on your um, dependent uh, data. Then you create a data frame a year in advance or however long you'd, you'd like to be in advance. And this is just for the uh, model to populate. You're just giving it something for it, to, for it to populate in the future. Then it takes your model and then, um, and then, and then uh, fills, fills in that, that data frame. And so in terms of the last step I've got in the code, it, you create a nice plot. And it's what I think this is one of the strengths of, uh, as well as the simplicity, but that you get um, that you get these nice visualizations of what, what's happening in the data. So this is again, and I'm sorry, it's from the docs, but it visualizes what you get. So what you're seeing the in the black dots is the real world observations. And what you're seeing in the blue is you're seeing that the prediction of the model. So it, is, it has actually gone through and 
predicted in the past as well as the future. And you can see there, there's anomalies in there definitely, but it does give you a trend. And so it gives you this overall graph, but it also gives you this nice um, like long-term trend. It gives you a weekly trend and a yearly trend as well. And I just thought this would be really useful for so many people just to be able to see this. Like, I don't know, if you have a grocery shop, you can see how how much bread people buy on given given days of the week. I don't know, you could, oh, yeah. I just see this as really applicable. And just the ease at which you do it is, I think it's, I think it's great. And in terms of my example, I do remember that there was a variation between the weekend price of Ethereum and the midweek, yeah, according to Facebook profit. So I, I did do remember that. But by this point, once I'd reached this point in terms of modeling Ethereum, I'd moved on to a Docker um, platform for crypto trading called FretTrade. Um, which I'll talk about next. And I tried to implement profit within the Docker image and I just struggled, I really struggled. So in the end, uh, like the uh, failure of the metaverse, I failed in terms of uh, Facebook profit. So in terms of Freck trade, I've just been really impressed with this um, because you can really easily, um, as, as I've done, like spin up a tiny um, one gigabyte instance um, of EC2 um, with it running and it has run for me for about, it's been running for about six weeks now. So what Freck Trade is, is it's a full platform just based around cryptocurrency. So it allows you to either take someone else's strategy, which is to be honest, what I've got running right now, or you can customize your own strategy, either just hard coded based on all the indicators, a lot of indicators, um, RSSI, um, all the different moving averages, or things like Golden Cross. It has all of those um, strategies pre-built within the library and you can, um, you can use them. And once, you have created your own strategy. It has a really nice CLI for um, back testing. So back testing in finance is the idea of once you've created your your hypothesis and you, you've written an algorithm about how to how you want to be trading constantly. Back testing goes go looks in the past and it applies your strategy at every single interval that, you, that you'd like. So say every day you wanted to look and see if the price was going up and you'd uh, sell when it's going up and you'd buy when it's going down. And then just look every day for um, if that was happening and then execute it. So the actual um, platform. It has a really nice web interface as well as the CLI. And it, so this is an example of, of one of the screens. This is the home screen that you get. Um, this is actually a nice photo because uh, there's been a lot of depression in um, the price of Ethereum lately. So I'm really happy that I took this photo, uh, took this snapshot when I did to present. Um, and also just in terms of where I'm practically at in terms of, um, in terms of uh, my, my um, use of this, I have activated, so I've had it um, just uh, like trading paper, fake trade for, um, for a month and then about two weeks ago, I changed it over and um, plugged in my actual API um, uh, credentials into it for Binance um, and gave it access to $300. And it actually, I, I'm still waiting for it to execute the first trade because um, it, it purchased, and you can, yes, beautiful. And you can see it purchased on the 11th 
the it it, it, um, it purchased Ethereum, but within the strategy, you define uh, um, the minimal return on investment, and um, you it's called a stop loss. And the stop loss is a percentage that the stock would go down um, before it will sell. So I've been stuck in this limbo um, with this one trade that actually um, hasn't sold yet. So um, I'm, I'm all set up and ready to go um, for um, it to be using real money. But this one trade of fake money um, has just been sitting there for, for ages. So uh, for anyone not aware, um, pretty soon Ethereum is going to move to um, a proof of stake model. Um, and hopefully the price will go up and I will execute my trade um, and start trading real money. <laughs> um, this also allows for shorting, but yeah, I haven't, I haven't played with that quite yet. This is another screenshot. Um, I think, yeah, this is just the general dashboard. Um, you can see the depressing red in there, but uh, as I said, these were fake trades and also most of the losses I've got um, were with a different strategy, not the current one I'm using now. The, the current one, you can see that it's in the bottom bar, it's quite green um, and it's quite green because, yeah, the strategy of the new strategy is very conservative, which, which suits my... Um, which suits the current market in Ethereum. In terms of comparing the different approaches, um, I just wanted to put a bit of a um, summary in there. Um, that the fast AI tabular model was easy to implement, but it didn't suit the time series analysis case. If you have an example where you're um, trying to predict, say the price of houses based upon uh, location and also attributes of the house. That's a great use case. There is no aspect of time in that in that data set. In my example, that's not the case. So I need a model that takes into account time as a context. Then I move to Facebook profit, and as I said, great visualiz visualization of trends, fantastic. But it failed to work within the threat trade platform, which I, which I really like. And then thirdly, um, in terms of default strategies on fret trade, um, provided a great quick start, but it could only access cryptocurrencies, which brings me to my next step um, and the final section, where I want to go. So in terms of doing this modeling, um, I'm still at a loss of how to find an edge over other people. Every, everyone can go online and get, even they can go into Yahoo Finance and download um, a lot of data for open, high, low and close for stocks and also for, oh, for, for cryptocurrencies. So it's difficult to find an edge. There, meeting with people in the um, machine learning meetups here in Canberra, there's, they've got ideas of you can use, um, you can plug into news. And so you're getting a constant feed from things like Reddit and also um, major news providers. And you can, using a program, you can analyze the emotion uh, and the, the public perspective towards different stocks. You could do that. There's other people who are talking about things like you could look at the whole blockchain and you can try and pick, because you can see everyone buying and selling, you try and pick the winners and you follow them. You could do that. Geez, that sounds tough. It sounds very tough. So my thinking is to go to a context I know a bit more of and therefore it's time to change market. So what I want to do and the way where I'm going to move to now is find more data and have a better trained model. So what does that actually mean? That means that I want to use um, a model that actually takes into account time, so it provides a context. And what I'm looking to now and um, is the Fast AI um, Time Series AI library, because also it's built upon um, the Pandas data frame, which I really like working with. 
Um, and again, FastOI has a good community and good support that can, um, can help me achieve this. In terms of the context that I want to apply this analysis to, I'm thinking um, of commodities and specifically things like um, wheat, barley, canola, and maybe sugar. Um, just to take advantage, my initial uh, experience was in agriculture and, and, and really broad acre agriculture. So kind of it allows me to combine a few things that I'm really interested in. In terms of saying I want something with more data, um, the uh, Bureau of Meteorology does release constant weather data um, and I have accessed that through in the past through Willy Weather. Um, so I can hit an API and be getting um, weather data from all of the uh, all of the airports around Australia, even tiny little airports, they um, they release that weather data. Why is that important? It's important because um, any plant require is existing in in a range of weather conditions. Um, how cold has it been through the work, the coldest mornings in in winter? How much rain has there been through, been through the season? Which is the major driver of um, yield at the end of the season. And overall, what I'm going to be trying to do is not just determine the overall price of wheat. All my aim, what I'd like to do in the future is I just want to try and predict the difference between the world price of say wheat and the Australian price. Because that difference, my understanding would be, um, the difference would be defined by firstly, the shipping costs and logistics, all of those things around that and then all of these weather factors. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I'm really gonna try and um, see, if, see if I can predict using that time series AI model. Um, further data that I can add into that is, um, firstly, the, there are publicly accessible soil data maps. Um, so I, I could be using that through um, different uh, Python libraries and factoring that into the analysis. And also there is the Sentinel-2 um, satellite, which provides a lot of um, imagery every at, at a frequency of every five days. And, and farmers already use this um, to determine how much uh, biomass is in their crops. Um, but yeah, I, I'd like to see if I can factor that into a model somehow. And this is, yeah, farmers um, are trading. Um, so there is, there is an, an active market as well. So that is my future plan. All right, on to my last section. Hopefully I've interested you somewhat in time series analysis. Um, but, and if you're interested in this, the first thing, uh, the first course that I really um, took to get my head around cleaning data and also visualizing data and, um, and machine learning is uh, Jose Portillo, um, has made a Udemy course called Python for Data Science and Machine Learning Bootcamp. He's so good. He's fantastic. It's like a teacher I'd love to have. Um, just patient and slowly talk through things. He can just speed through if, it, if it's too slow. Again, I've spoken about Fast AI already, but I'd strongly suggest um, uh, listening or watching that um, course, just especially the first one, just as an introduction. Um, Jeremy Howard, who runs, he's, a, he's the major speaker in Fast AI, he's now in Queensland as well, and their um, 2022 course has just been released and it's, it's on YouTube. And finally, I've just started this book, um, Time Series Forecasting in Python, um, and this looks good. It, it starts with um, things like just moving average, um, so one of the basic ways of, of uh, modeling data over time. So instead of just looking in terms of my example of Ethereum, looking at the individual price right now um, at 1247, maybe I look over the last five days and get an average of that price and use that in an analysis. And then it also does um, talk about, um, does talk about Facebook profit as well and using that. 
But if you're interested in um, combining software engineering, hope people are with financial markets, I'd strongly suggest um, part-time Larry. He's so interesting. He does so many random um, projects like um, he tries to create his own um, scheduler, but the scheduler actually use smart contracts and he actually builds it and he just steps through i think it's over like four or five videos he just steps through exactly how to do it and all the tools that you need and that's where i found out about um part-time oh sorry that's found about um found out about fret trade but yeah he talks about a lot of different um financial things so yeah that was the four sections that i wanted to talk about um Thank you very much for listening. This has been uh, my passion. I'm, I'm really interested in this time series analysis. So I really appreciate um, you listening and um, uh, while it's Skillfield and um, Asta for, for asking me and giving me a bit of time to prepare this. So thank you. Um, any questions? Thanks, Asta.